Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today at Top Reddit Post, we're gonna be taking a look at entitled parents, but not the regular entitled parents that usually we find in the wild. Oh no, we're gonna be looking at the worst. We're gonna be looking at the domestic kind. And if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do so. Leave us a comment and a thumbs up in the end of this video. My mom wants me to become a stripper. All right then, I'm back on the subreddit again, make my second post. Now this story. I've kind of moved on from, but it was going on for a while. I'll explain it all here. Be a long one. The LDR at the bottom. Backstory. I have one brother and one sister. I'm Mel. I'm the oldest of the bunch. My brother is about two years younger and my sister is just about one year younger. At the time of this story, we all have pretty good income. Not tooting my own horn, but I honestly had the best. My sister had the worst. She was consistently borrowing money from either me or my mom. She didn't waste it on things like drugs, but she just didn't have enough income and she had to pay a hefty amount of rent. So on to the cast. I I won't really have a cast for this one, I'll just call people by mom or sister, etc. So, I knew my sister was looking for a way she could make more money. She was kind of desperate at this point. I was helping her out. She was intelligent enough for a better job. Then one day, I found her a solid looking job and asked her if she wanted to go interview for that. She met all the requirements. But she said no. I was pretty confused because why would you turn down something like that, but she didn't accept it, and then she quit the job she already had. So I knew something had to be up. Came over to her place and asked her. She tried to deny everything at first, but then she just let loose. She kinda just regretfully told me she was trying out stripping. I was silent, I was thinking about it, and honestly thought that she might have done this had crossed my mind before. I didn't know whether to be mad or sympathetic. I decided not not to be mad. She begged me not to tell her mom, so I didn't. I just told her to not do anything stupid, and then kind of became her partner. I would drive her to places I shouldn't have been. I would make sure she got home alright, and I was the only one who knew what she did. I never really saw what she was doing, just knew. Soon, our mom found out. I could say it was through my sister, but I honestly forgot how she found out, and my mom kind of freaked out. She called my sister all kind of slurs, calling her a failure, saying she would disown her. My sister was crying, it was bad. And then everything changed. When my sister told her mom about how much money she made, although I don't like admitting it, it was more than I made. Let me just say she made a lot, like a lot. My mother was dumbfounded. And then, wouldn't you guess, she became my mother's angel. She ignored all my sister did wrong and pulled focus on the money she made instead. She would always brag about her to relatives, saying she worked hard and deserved it. And the worst part? My mom now acted like I was a failure, and that I should make as much money as my sister. Makes me remember why I was so eager to move out. Now, let me just say my sister was incredibly supportive. She offered me a bunch of money. I declined most, I only accept a bit for driving her in favors, nothing for no reason. So let's get that out of the way. Now, I was mad at my mom. I wouldn't talk to her if I didn't have to. I was disappointed that she felt like that. Made me embarrassed. My mom constantly bugged me. I should make more money. I should get a job like my sister. I should do as well as my sister. It was bad. How do you be proud of that? So yeah, that's what happened. Now, my brother was kind of ignored throughout this. She decided to focus on me, which sucks, but yeah. Now, a few months later, my sister quit that job. She found a better job and she never had any bad accidents or things like drug addictions. Me and my sister remained friends throughout the whole thing. And now, everyone just pretends to forget about what happened. No, I don't blame her, not really. She needed money, so she did what she did. Obviously. I don't encourage it, but she didn't spend her money on things like drugs and alcohol, so she kept her head level. 
a bit. Blame my mom though. She was annoying as hell. The LDR, my sister made a lot of money stripping. Mom shamed me and said I should get a job like hers. Bleh. So yeah, that's it. Edit. Thank you so much, you slash Trinia Joe 320. Three others for the silver. All the support. Already? Thank you. Edit too. Wonderful, kind person. That was a joke, okay? Sorry if I sounded conceited. Edit 3. Thank you so much for the gold, stranger. Edit 4. Sorry if it seems clickbaity. She did tell me you should get a job like your sister. Sorry if I left that out. I had no intention of clickbait. Edit 5. I changed a couple of words because I was getting some negative feedback. Nothing that alters the story, just descriptive words. Edit 6. Jeez, I don't hate people who do sex work. Sorry if I worded this story poorly. I'm also sorry again if I insulted anyone in any way. Also, I made this story not against my sister. My mom is who made me write this story. I'm fine with what my sister did because she had to do it. But sex work can be dangerous and I didn't want her to put herself in danger. That's it. I'll try not to make any more edits, sorry. Hey guys, look at this. You should be proud of any work you do, unless that's something illegal. It's hard to make ends meet nowadays, and you do what you have to do. And if that's something don't feel comfortable, but you still do it, do until you can find something better like she did. And if you're fine with your job, whatever it is, just be happy. At least you're working instead of just sitting on a corner, asking people to give you stuff, or asking your family for help without doing anything for it. My entitled parents get mad I attempted suicide and I can't wash the dishes while in a hospital. So my parents kinda treat me like a maid. I do all laundry, housekeeping, washing, cleaning, basically everything. So I recently attempted suicide, yesterday actually, and I'm in the hospital writing this and I'm actually allowed my phone which is kinda cool. So when I woke up after having my stomach pumped and recovery, the nurse went to get my family. They come in and immediately start yelling. Why did you pull that stuff? Imagine the payments for this freaking ruined ambulance. Who will wash the dishes? The laundry? You freaking... I'm sorry, but you have to leave. She's in a fragile mental state. I started crying almost immediately after they began yelling. She's our daughter. We have to be here. No ma'am, please leave. She's very sensitive. You freaking horrible nurse. I bet you have been doing nothing this entire day, you lazy. You know the thing where people think where nurses get a lot of breaks and are lazy? Yes, my parents are those types of people. Leave us! Ma'am, I need you to stop cursing and leave. Fine. So they left. I never thought my parents entitled as they did defend me in certain things like my entitled aunt, saying it was my fault that I was raped and more of her stuff. But they are actually extremely Title. This is one instance of my parents' secret entitlement. They were yelling outside of my room as well. They're very pissed about my attempt, obviously. You know what? The saddest thing is that they're not upset because she actually got hurt. They're upset because she couldn't be their slave. You know what? She's in a bad situation. I hope things get better. I hope at least she's old enough or she's going to college very soon. EA claims adult child has to obey her because it's the law. Another post about a parent volunteering their adult child reminded me of this. It happened to my cousin, but I was there for the majority of the story. I remember it so clearly for a couple of reasons, in addition to just having a good memory. It was the first trip after my father had died and it was, sadly, the last trip I took with my mother. She died less than a year later. The LDR at the bottom. My aunt was always playing the big shot of solving people's problems but using my cousin as the actual person to take on the problem. Always for free. If someone insisted on paying, EA kept the money. Need a babysitter? A ride, house cleaned, your moaned, errands ran. Oh, my daughter can do it. As far as my aunt was concerned, the only reason Emily existed was to cater to her. Emily was her ultimate trophy. EA was entitled long before it became a huge thing. Cass, EA entitled Anne. 
Emily, cousin, Mike, Emily's boyfriend, me, Acer, PO1, police officer one, PO2, police officer two, judge, judge. My aunt has always been entitled. It's her personality type. My mother couldn't stand her little sister, so we tried to avoid her while still maintaining contact with her husband and child. My uncle, their brother, lived further south in the States, so we always tried to avoid DA knowing when we were visiting. On this trip, I was staying with my cousin for a couple of weeks in the summer, and we were going to do the tourist things. EA thought that the university not being in session meant that cousin was slave labor. One day, Emily decided that enough was enough. She was supposed to run errands for a friend of EA, and had told her mother she had plans. Her mother, as usual, acted as though Emily had agreed and expected her to comply. Emily just didn't run the errand for the friend as demanded. It was that simple. My mother and I had arrived about 10 minutes before the phone rang. EA called, and I thought it was back during landlines. She was screaming so loudly that both my mother and I could hear both sides clearly. How dare you embarrass me with my friends? You call Mrs. No Name and apologize immediately. You're grounded for a month and you may not drive the car at all. Now you make that call and go run those errands now. If anyone can explain how she was supposed to do this without using the car, I'd like to know. Mom, I'm 22. I do not live in your house. You do not pay my bills and you do not own my car. Run the errands yourself. I have plans. My mom was a little nervous living at that point. It's a mom thing, and she has met her sister thing, even though we're both fine. She left just after meeting Emily's boyfriend. We left and went to a water park and a few other things. We got back to the house and we're talking about where to have dinner. Mom insisted on paying for us to go somewhere really nice for dinner that night. We get back and Emily's car is gone. She called and asked where it was. Mom, do you have my car? Yes, I do. Your father brought me over so I could check and see if you had obeyed me. I told you that you're grounded and you're not there when I arrived. I'm keeping your car for a month, but I'm going to let Miss No Name borrow it because you have been so horrible to her. Mom, that's stealing. I want my car back now or I am going to report it stolen. No, Miss No Name cannot drive my car. I am your mother. What I say goes, Missy. You need to learn some respect and to get it through your head that I am in charge and you're the child. You don't own anything. It's mine because I'm your mother. The police will likely arrest you for wasting their time. Emily hangs up and looks at me. She's so angry, she's crying rage. Acer, if I call the police, she's going to know you're here. I can live with that. That fallout is a whole other story. She picks up the phone and calls the police. Tells them the car has been taken without her permission where it is. Mike drives us over there. We do not want to miss the show. Police officer knocks on the door. EA answers. Hello, officers. Do you need something? Ma'am, the vehicle in the driveway matched the description location of a vehicle reported stolen. It's my car. I took it from my daughter because she's grounded from using it for being disobedient and disrespectful. I see. May we have a word with her, please? She doesn't live here. You three, come over here, please. Did one of you call us? I did. It's my car, officer. My mother seems to think that she has control over it and me. It's my car. I'm your mother and you have to obey me. It's the law. Tell her, officers. Uh, actually, ma'am, there's no such law. Your daughter is an adult. There most certainly is such a law. I'm going to report you to your chief for not knowing it. I may even sue. May I see the car registration and your license, please? Emily hands them to him. Ma'am, this car is registered to the name of your daughter and only your daughter. It's her car car and you have no right to drive it. EA looks at the registration the officer is showing her and then snatches Emily's license from him and slams the door. The police officers look at each other for a moment and then shrug and ring the bell again. EA answers it looking very smug. Ma'am, I'm going to need you to return the license now. EA hands him the license that she has cut in several pieces. 
Now she can't drive because she doesn't have a license. She looks at Emily as though she just scored some odd victory. Then she finally noticed me. Hey, sir, what are you doing here? I'm just trying to have a nice visit with my cousin. She has hated me for years. You need to leave. I didn't give you permission to visit. Where is your mother? I don't need your permission. My mother is not here. I can travel without her. Ma'am, you're under arrest for destruction of government property. Apparently, cutting up a valid license of family in some places. Who knew? And grand theft of this car. You can't arrest me. I'm her mother. I have rights. Yes, you do. He then reads them to her. The officer explains to us that until she destroyed the license, he had been willing to issue an appearance ticket. Then instead of being arrested, she would just have to appear in front of of the judge and got a fine. This was a much bigger deal. Emily ran into the house to tell her father what had happened. We all catch it for a little bit until the phone rang. It was ZA telling him to call their attorney. We laughed. I drove the car back to Emily's and took her to get her license replaced the next morning. The attorney called by my uncle apparently didn't know my aunt and he showed up at the first hearing a week later to try to get it dismissed. It looked to be going her way at first. Your Honor, this is a family matter. It's simply a case of a mother disciplining her child and the child calling the police because her mother grounded her from using the car. So she got mad and called the police and she, not knowing that it was a crime to destroy the license, did so. Yes, Your Honor, this is pretty much it. Persecutor, do you have nothing better to do today? Uh, no, Your Honor, I don't. I consider it rather important. When a 22-year-old woman has has her car stolen, it doesn't matter who stole it. She has just as much of a right to justice as someone who has their car stolen by a stranger. 22 is the victim, 22? Yes, your honor, the victim is 22-year-old woman, who is the sole owner of the vehicle in question. Her mother became enraged at her daughter, then she then went to her daughter's home, stole her car and later destroyed her license. Your honor, I was not aware of the age or living situation of the victim. Victim. I was under impression that the child was a minor who resided with her parents. EA was sitting there, still looking smug. Her attorney was sweating bullets. Uh, EA, do you realize that these are very serious charges and if convicted, you face up to 8 years in prison? For what? I have the right to discipline my child as I see fit. She disobeyed me. She'll think it twice before doing it again. No, you don't. You have the right to discipline your child with the confines of the law. You have stepped outside of that parameter. You stole your daughter's car. I'm her mother. It's my right. It isn't really theft because she's my child and her property belongs to me by law. Where did you get your law degree? I don't have one. Then let me be the first to explain to you that your child's a legal adult, period. You have no right to anything of hers without her express consent, period. You may not take her car without her permission, period. You may not enter her home without her permission. Period. Do you understand that? You don't know what you're talking about. I'm her mother. That gives me the right. I'm in charge. No, ma'am. I'm in charge. This case will be held over for a trial. I went home a week later. EA eventually took a plea deal where she had two years probation and had to take parenting classes. The parenting classes were Mike's idea and the prosecutor thought it was great. We laughed hysterically over that because my cousin is an only child. LOL. Emily and Mike married a year later and moved the hell away from there. This took place about 30 years ago. EA maintained for the rest of her life that the judges, there are five for different status hearings, didn't know what the hell they were doing and she was right. The LDR, entitled aunt, thinks she can punish a dull child by taking her car. The police and the judge disagree with her. Hey guys, I'm just letting you know, a judge, he needs to go through a lot of years of law school. I mean, not just law school, he needs to do pre-law and all that stuff. Police officers, most of them, 99% of them are well versed in the law. Do not think you know more than they do unless you hold a degree higher than they have, okay? And don't try to invent some law like some woman that got thrown out of her car 
that backs from the 1700s or something and act like that still exists, okay? And hey guys, that's all we have time for today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories and if you haven't subscribed yet, do so. Hit that notifications button, give me a like and leave a comment down below. You guys have no idea how much that helps the channel when you guys leave a comment or share or anything like that. So hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys tomorrow.